Hey guys, someone asked me a question this morning. Um, why did you start auditing cops in the community? It's such a great question. But it's not necessarily one that I could just answer it in the comments section. Um, I would have had to write a novel, maybe, or something to that effect. So I decided to do a video. And just, you know, it's easier for me to do a video and tell you guys why than to sit and try to figure out what I'm going to say in a comment. <clears throat> Especially with my iPhone, because it's, my fingers are big or something, because I type... And it looks like Czechoslovakian language. I have to go back and do spell check on every third word. So the keyboard is so small. So I just make a video and say it. Uh, but it's such a great question. Why did I start auditing cops in the community? And by the way, I'm not anti-cop. I'm really not. I'm anti-bad cop. And I know people say, well, there are no good cops. I believe there are cops that are good and trying to do good in the community. The only problem with, is, and I read a book some years ago that this is prevalent in the LAPD, is that if a good cop tries to be a good cop and tell on a bad cop, that there's an underlying rule in law enforcement departments that snitches get stitches and end up in ditches. Uh, and in the book I read, it's from a former LAPD cop that's no longer LAPD cop. And in fact, he had written a lot of things about corruption and dirt in the LAPD from years ago. This is Daryl Gates era. That, you know, if you snitch on a, a fellow officer, uh, you get put on the night shift and then you end up in gangland and you get in some type of shootout or pinned down by a gang gunfire. They're like, who is it? Oh, that, is that the snitch? Yeah. Fuck. Let him. We'll go out there in a minute. Let's finish our breakfast or whatever. And boom, you're stuck getting shot at while your buddies are there having coffee and going, should we go? Yeah, let's go. Fuck it. You know, uh, they don't rush out to you. So the good cops sometimes are held by either fear or intimidation into not snitching. And they end up, they, 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 they can't be as good as they probably want to be. So I do believe there are cops out there that want to be good. They just, there's the bad cops are bad cops. So why did I start auditing cops in the community or, you know, doing cop watching? <clears throat> so I was watching a video one night. And I was just, you know, I've been filming cops on and off, not for any particular reason, but I'd see a cop car across the street from my home. I'd go, what's going on over there? And I start recording it for YouTube. Just, you know, not for any particular reason, just for YouTube. And I watched a video with High Desert Community Watch, and it was the one where this cop yells at him, get your hand out of your pocket. Like, whoa, this cop's kind of crazy. And it was San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, and I believe it was Apple Valley. And I thought, well, that's our Sheriff's Department where I live. But then I started watching more videos, and then I started watching videos across the nation and seeing law enforcement officers who are public servants that were acting very unprofessional and had no integrity. And I thought, well, this is bull, you know, and as a public servant, I was embarrassed because I thought, here's an opportunity for a police officer as a public servant to serve the community and say, how can I serve you? What can I do for you? Okay. Instead, I was watching these police officers continually and repetitively act like bullies and tyrants over these people just standing there filming, recording with a camera. And I was like, why are you acting like an asshole to a guy that's just recording your police department instead of coming out and going, yeah, this building was established and da, 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 da. Uh, would you guys like to see the back? Come here, let me show you, you know, whatever. No, instead, these police officers were acting like bullies and telling them, you need to get the hell out of here. Or you're going to get arrested. Okay, give me your ID. You're being suspicious, you know, stuff like that. And I thought, that's not how you serve the community as a public servant. And as a public servant, I was embarrassed. I was like, this is, whoa. So I thought, I'm going to go out there. And so High Desert Community Watch was one of the first videos, if not the first video, that I saw on it. And I started watching more and more and more. <clears throat> And I thought, well, I'm going to go out there in my community here and record some of the police and some of the public officials and some of the post offices and just see how these public servants act. And I'm going to educate them on how they're supposed to be as public servants. And I started doing that. 
And as I was doing that, I started to see things I didn't like. Like I would see like San Bernardino Police Department. I saw them pull over one time this car. They pulled three black men out of the car, put them on the curb. And they went through the whole vehicle, just searched the whole vehicle. And he said, okay, well, get your tags fixed. Your tags are expired. We're going to give you a citation. It's a fix-it ticket. You just get your tags fixed and, you know, then we'll dismiss the ticket. And I started thinking, why did you search the whole car because of expired rate? You could just gave him a citation and sent him on his way. It was because he had three black men in the car. I know some people are going to disagree with me. But that's not one isolated incident. I started seeing that over and over. And I started seeing that most of the traffic stops where they were searching the vehicle was a minority, either Hispanic or Mexican or a black. A lot of the traffic stops with white drivers, I would see them just talk to them, give them a citation and send them on their way. Unless they were on probation or parole. And I had a couple like that where I would ask them, I'd say, why do you search your car? I'm on probation. Oh. All right. You know, because you're on probation or parole, you're pretty much a ward of the state. So it, it was unsettling to me. It, it put an uneasy feeling in my gut. And I was like, this is wrong. And then I started doing the editorials and seeing how cops are lying on police reports. And how cops would lie and then a video would surface and show something different. And I thought, you know what? We need to record the police. Because when they lie or when they don't have their body cams on, I read uh, or I saw one story where a guy was shot by the police and they didn't have body cams on. And they said, well, he had a gun and this. And the only evidence is what the cops said because nobody recorded it and they didn't have their body cams on. I said, if somebody had been recording that, we would know what happened because we would have video. So I started recording the police more. I started recording Ukaipa Police Department simply because it's local. <laughs> you know, I didn't really expect to get anything from Ukaipa PD. But this year, the turn of events with the one cop who lied, he lied, he told a lie, uh, and, you know, misapplied California vehicle code 21995 intentionally to him me up and then arrested me. And um, so the turn of events with that officer and then his sergeants uh, justifying it, justifying the behavior and saying, well, you get your time in court. You'll get your, you know, you, you can go before the judge and you can explain everything, which really means we don't care if the cop was right or wrong. We're going to justify and back his bad behavior and you can just fight it out in court. That's kind of how it goes. Which means to me, they don't care about the community. They don't care about the residents that they're here to serve. They only care about their own reputation. And they stand shoulder to shoulder and defend and justify each other, whether the actions are good or bad, whether the behavior is good or bad. And I'm not just talking about because I got arrested. I gave the guy my name. He said my date of birth and wrote it down and then said to dispatch on his radio after he's refusing to give me his date of birth. After he wrote it down. And his sergeants, I told his sergeants that and they said, well, you can fight it out in court. You'll get your day in court. Which means, well, you know, we're going to just go ahead and justify it because we don't want him to look bad. <clears throat> We don't want to admit that he was wrong because then that's to admit our department did something wrong. And I started to question how many other people are getting their rights violated or are getting treated, mistreated by not only this deputy, by, uh, but by other deputies in the department. Now, there's some good officers in that department. Don't get me wrong. Ukaiba PD has some good police officers. And I know you guys are going to say, oh, there's no good cops. There's some good deputies in that department. Sure. But there are also some bad cops. And the fact that the sergeants and the lieutenant and the police chief support that bad behavior by not changing it, they need to be recorded. We need to record everything they do and let the video tell the truth. So I guess to do a summation of this and to sum it up, uh, the moral of the story, 
the reason I started cop watching or doing audits of the police in the community is because I'm continually seeing nationwide, not just locally, but I'm continually seeing uh, law enforcement officers who lie or misreport something and then a video shows something different. And they do it because they have to justify. You know, you shoot an unarmed person, you got to go, um, but I feared for my life. He was running at me. And, you know, and then the video shows up on YouTube and it shows the guy was six feet away standing there staring at you and you shot him, you know, something to that effect, DeKalb County, Georgia. So that's why I started recording the police. It just, it's in my heart. It's, it's something that I've become passionate about because I'm seeing people who are being mistreated and wronged in the community and they need somebody on their side. Um, case in note or case in point, when I recorded out there at the motel that night on, on the, the Ukaipa Boulevard and the lady came up to me and said, thank you for being out here. Her voice was shaking and she was about to start crying. And she said, I've been hurt by the police before. They've actually hurt me and thrown me down. She said, so thank you for being out here and recording because it made me feel safe. That right there, you know, kind of moves me to be more passionate about this to where I'm like, you know what? The community needs someone out there to record police interactions. When people get stopped and they're like, Oh fuck man. Oh, but oh my God, don't shoot. I got my hands on the steering wheel and they look over and there's a guy with a camera. They feel safe. They're like, okay, somebody's recording. So we'll be okay. Cause somebody's recording this. You know, I recorded in Colton that night. The cops saw me walk up and I'm recording. And then the cop let the guy out of the car and wrote him a ticket and told him to go on. The guy walked over to me and said, thank you, man. You just made my night. You saved me. Thank you. And walked off. Stuff like that. That's what, you know, kind of cements the fact that I need to be out here recording the police because the community there are people in the community that really appreciate us being out there when they get stopped by a police officer or a deputy and they look over and see a camera they're like all right i know some aren't that we get some people that aren't appreciative some people that think we're just out there to harass the cops and make them look bad and no how many times have i said you know about certain deputies the very professional deputy right there Cool deputy. That's a nice deputy. How many times have I said that? But if the deputy is violating people's rights, if the deputy is misapplying a law so that he can push his own personal feelings and emotions, it needs to be on video because the truth needs to be told. And that's why I record and that's why I started recording because I got tired of seeing time and time again nationally police officers that were acting like bullies, intimidation tactics, tyrants, liars, lawbreakers. I'm just tired of it. You know, we can give cops all the kudos in the world. You know what it does for the bad cops? It makes them go, yeah, see, people love us. Well, people love good cops. People don't love you. You're an asshole. So that's why we record. I'm sorry that we have to record the good cops to get to the bad ones. But if the good cops will put their foot up the ass of the bad ones and stop worrying about being snitches, we wouldn't have to record. They'd take care of themselves. Community Leo Watch, thank you guys. I hope that answers your question. I'm very loquacious. I talk a lot. I understand. But thank you for watching. I'm going to take a nap, man, because it's lunchtime. I'll talk to you guys later.